Welcome back to the HUD everyone, I'm Zaccaroni and doing second helpings while making toppings, leftovers and year supplier videos can be a real nightmare to do because they take a lot of my time away from all the stuff I'm doing right now. So for the new year I'm going to do a 3 month recap on the games I have and haven't completed yet and present them in quick by side opinions to save time on the other videos I'm doing. Oh, and uh, remember when I said I'll do second helpings for Death Stranding and Jedi Fallen Order? Well, I'm gonna put those in here because I was finally burned out from the last second helpings video I did, which is probably a good thing really. So without further ado, please be seated, and here's what's in my completions menu so far. On November 15th, 2019, I started playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And then on December 21st, 2019, I have beaten the main story. My anticipations were in the middle for this title, because it was made by Titanfall's developer Respawn Entertainment, which is a good thing, and EA's track record hadn't been that good with past Star Wars games, which is a bad thing of course. But when I started playing it, I was actually surprised that this is actually a good Star Wars game, something I didn't have since Battlefront 2. Um, uh... Pandemic's Battlefront 2. It's got great combat that requires perfect timing with a parry mechanic combined with force powers in tough situations, solid platforming with good exploration and set pieces, and great boss fights that feature duels with inquisitors and giant-like creatures like the Gorgora, a griffin-like alien that was one of the hardest fights I had, and it was all played on Jedi Master, which is the highly recommended difficulty for this game. Plus, it's got an interesting story where it started off with becoming a Jedi to fight back against the Empire, only for the road to start to get more complicated for our hero, Kyle, which is all backed up by a cast of characters who have reasoning throughout the game, and a final slice that got a rewarding final boss and an epic set piece with one major character at the one spot. The only complaints I have is that the parry mechanic is not quite as good as Sekiro's, the game can struggle with the performance at times, resulting in slowdowns and freezes for a few seconds, and the collectibles are hit and miss, with ones that will develop Kyle, while others are just cosmetic to customize your main character, ED1, and the starship you travel across the galaxy with. But they are just small nitpicks for a Star Wars game that finally gave EA some redemption, and hopefully it will stay like that, just without the microtransactions and loot boxes for playable heroes in the future. On December 18th, 2019, I played Shovel Knight King of Cards, and then on December 24th, 2019, I beat in the main game. Shovel Knight was a great game when it came out, but when Plague of Shadows and Spectre of Torment came along at DLC, I felt that they were too similar to the main game. Now Yacht Club Games is finally putting the Shovel Knight saga to rest with the final DLC titled King of Cards, and boy did they knock this one out of the park. Because not only the levels are different to the last game, but they are also shorter but more challenging, with new tricks like surfaces that prevent me from jumping. Plus, the controls are tight, just like a Shovel Knight game should be, that my missed jumps were my fault because I didn't time it right, and my shoulder charge technique that allowed King's Knight to pirouette when charging into walls and can bounce on top of enemies while spinning. And while they are the original bosses from the main game that are exploring the free maps, the end of the map bosses are all new and more challenging, like King Pridamor, who would suit up in armor that is bigger than King's Knight himself. However, my most surprising moment is that they build an actual card game in this with one simple goal, get my blue cards on a set number of glowing gems before my opponent does. At first, the matches started off easy, but then they start to get more tougher with cards that can blow up other cards or can switch the cards to the opposite player, which forced me to sort out my deck before accepting a challenge. And every time I lose a match, then my opponent can take a card away from me that I played, so I have to play smart to come out on top. But luckily, I can buy back lost cards and I can buy cheat packs to turn the tide of the game, which you might say is unfair for the opponent, but there were some moments that I still lost with those cheat packs, so the game is still fair without feeling too cheap. After the final slice, well, it didn't end with an epic card game, but it did end with final levels that put my shoulder charging reflexes to the test, along with an epic final boss and an ending that set up the main story in a good way. 
So in conclusion, I like King of Cards with a challenging platforming and interesting card game that I'm hoping that they'll make it into a reality. And after 5 years of working on the Shovel Knight saga, Yacht Club Games have finally did all the promises they made, proving you need a lot of love to make something spectacular. Huh? What's that? What about Showdown? Um, let's just watch this next one and I'll get back to you on that. On December 25th, 2019, I played and beaten the main story of Concrete Genie. On Christmas Day, I decided to get Concrete Genie on the PS4, which I heard good things about, and when I started playing it, it was good, but after playing it to the end, it was, well, fine really. So Concrete Genie is a free roaming platformer where you can play drawings on any building in Dunska, the game setting, and while the platforming is basic, the real star of the game is the presentation itself. Whatever you put on comes to life, like flowers, northern lights, and even stars that stayed there throughout the game, and they look spectacular to look at. Even the fluffy monsters known as genies that you can mix and match look charming too. Plus, they are used to solve puzzles depending on what color they are. Like red ones can burn stuff, yellow ones can power up generators, while blue ones can blow boxes away. You start up with a few pages in your notebook, but then you find more that are scattered in the environment. And while the platform is not quite as smooth as other platformers, hunting down the pages gave me a reason to explore the town entirely. However, the main story only lasts around 5 hours, which might be short, but it was worth it. Especially seeing the story to the end where we see our protagonist get constantly bullied by 5 kids, who actually play a big role in the story. But the way you get to the end, it sort of turned the game from good to fine. In the first four hours, the main objective is to place any drawings on Pacific walls that are covered in decoration lights to unlock new areas in Dunska. Then after that, the game decided to dish the decoration mechanic and shoot on in combat for the one hour final slice where I face against corrupted genies I created. This is the weakest part of the game, because while the combat is decent, it starts to get boring throughout the whole way. Even if it was wrapped up nicely, getting there should have relied on its presentation rather than gameplay. Also, I had fun with the VR mode that allowed me to place drawings in a 3D environment, but this feels like a toy rather than the actual game compared to the main mode. Despite the main game lasting around 5 hours, Concrete Genie's first 4 hours of playtime makes it a good game, but for the last hour of the final slice, it turns it into a fine game that should have wrapped things up in a better way. On December 27, 2019, I started playing Shovel Knight Showdown, and then on December 31st, 2019, I beat in every character's story mode. Phew, just in time really. A 4 player party fighter featuring a cast of Shovel Knight characters. Yeah, that's hard to believe at first, but after playing through the story of each character, it could work. I'm only saying this because I haven't tried it with friends yet, given that there's no online multiplayer. But after what I played, it could work, so let's talk about the single player content with the game's mechanics as well. Also, I'm playing on the easiest difficulty because since this is a fighting game, I want to learn the characters ins and outs to find out which one is for me, and the difference between them. So the first character I played was Shovel Knight, obviously, and the first round I played was Grab the Gems, where I need to have the most gems before time runs out, or if I collect a set number of them to instantly win. And I said to myself while playing this, man, me and my friends are going to get a kick out of this at the next gaming get together. Then the next round was Deathmatch, where we're in a last man standing contest to win, and to be honest, I don't think we'll be playing this mode more than the gems really. Then after a few rounds later, I was at the final boss, and without spoiling too much of who it is, let's just say it started off with collecting gems, ultimately ending with a good old fashioned Shovel Knight fight that was pretty easy given I was playing on easy, really. Despite having a few unbalanced matches that frustrated me, the main mode is well put together, with interesting matches and rivalries that added a bit of contact to each character, and endings with interesting results to the lore of the series. And for the gameplay that was taken from the original game, it works, with characters that play differently, like Shield Knight, who can throw her shield like Captain America, while Mole Knight can go underground and pop out at the right time. Plus, the counter mechanic that pushed back everyone when an attack had landed comes in handy. If you can get it right, of course. 
course. Now the next thing to do is to play this game with my mates at private locations. So check back with me in 3 months to see how that went. Only then I'll give my final opinion on Shovel Knight Showdown. In the beginning to the end of 2019, I've been playing Fortnite. Before 2009 began, I was making a decision on which game I want to play for a whole year that had the most popularity. And so I chose Fortnite, a battle royale that was known for its cartoonish art style and copyright, I mean, uh, fancy dance moves. On my first attempt, I failed, so I keep trying until I get good, and after so many attempts and a close finish, I came to the realization that this game is not for me really. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad game though, there are some creative ideas like making structure I'd cover by getting the materials I need, but for building towers, well, I'm just not as quick as other people who know the game's ins and out. I mean, just watch this. Yeah. How do they do that? But I think the big reason why I didn't enjoy it is that the gameplay wasn't exciting to me. Where it takes a long time to find somebody to put switch cheese holes in their bodies, if you have a vehicle of course, and it's more depending on chance when you are desperately need a weapon that is superior to others. Though I did have fun with the Avengers content when I was using Thor's axe to go for Thanos' head, and also this community made mode where I need to blend into the environment to score a point without them spotting me, and probably painting a hole in my head. So to wrap this up, Fortnite is iconic and recognizable with its art style and personality, but I think I should have played another battle royale that is quicker and accessible for me really. Now that those are the games I played, let's talk about the other games I played but haven't beaten yet. So Death Stranding is the first game on this list, and you might be asking, surely you have beaten this game since it was released two months ago? Well, I was too busy with the other titles I was playing with, and I was working hard on making videos for them after I complete them. But with this new video approach, it could make beating the main story more quicker. So I'm getting back into this one in the new year, along with another game I got for Christmas called Ukulele and the Impossible Lair, a 2D platformer that is a spiritual successor to the Donkey Kong Country series. So check back with me later on those games and all the other titles that I've been playing in the future. But what that I'm hearing? What's the next year's supply game? Well, it's actually two games this time because I like to mix things up this time. These games are Apex Legends, EA's and Respawn's surprising first person shooter hit from the last year, and Rocket League's Sionix football slash soccer slash drive em up game. So look out for those videos in the upcoming 2020, and if you like what you see, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. But until then, I'm Zacharoni. Enjoy your pizza, and I'll see you next time.